What's up everybody, Entertain45 here with a quick video on how to set up your online broadcast software, better known as OBS. Uh, first to get the software, it's completely free. You want to go to obsproject.com. I'll leave a link in the description below for you. And the version that I use and definitely recommend would be the OBS Studio. And the reason I prefer this version has a lot more functionality. Also, for the same settings, it seems to have a lot better outcome and be more forgiving. Once you download the program and open it up, the interface will look like this. You just want to click on settings like you see my mouse pointer over here on the right. Uh, that'll bring you to your next little menu like this. First tab it starts you off with is general. Uh, outside of needing to switch it for a different language other than English, uh, you won't have to touch any of the options here. This brings you to your next tab, the stream tab. This tab is used to set up where you'll be broadcasting your stream to, you know, for example, Twitch or YouTube. In the second tab here, you're going to see service. That'll be where you put, you know, either Twitch or YouTube or Restream is real popular. And then the stream key is going to be a specific code from their web page that will allow you access to broadcast to them and specifically in your channel. The next and arguably most important tab on the list is output. Here you're going to be determining some major components for both your computer's performance and the quality that it's recording in. For your encoder, you want to make sure you have X264. The next entry you want to go to is bitrate. This is one of the most crucial parts in the whole process of setting up your stream. If you're trying to go for a 1080p stream, 3000 is just the bare minimum you want to set it to. So say your computer can't handle the bitrate of 3000, you can go down to 2250 and that'll give you an output of 720p. The next input is keyframe interval. You want to set this to 2. Anything different can cause incompatibility, especially with Twitch. Lastly, you want to make sure your computer usage is set to very fast. This will allow it to have high quality and not use up too many resources in the process. That wraps up the output tab. Next will be audio. The audio tab is basically to set up where OBS is recording the sound from for both the PC and your voice. To edit these, you'd go to desktop audio device. Uh, if you're not sure what that is, I'll show you a quick way to find out. To do this, you want to go to your taskbar and right click on the little speaker. Mine's on top, but most of yours are on bottom. You want to click on the option playback devices and bring up this menu. The item with the green check is your primary output device and it's highlighted with a green check mark that says default device. To set up your mic you would want to go to mic and auxiliary audio device and select your microphone from there. So that wraps up audio. Next we'll bring up video. First option it will be asking for which should be automatically input is base canvas resolution. This allows OBS to know exactly what your resolution is and capture it allowing for no black edges and a perfect screen fit. If the value wasn't there and you need to input it or you're curious just to verify, just go to the desktop and right click. This brings up the menu. On that menu just select screen resolution and the next page will show you clearly right in the middle. The output scaled resolution should be, you know, what quality stream you want to output, you know. 1920 by 1080 would be 1080 for example. If your computer's having trouble sustaining the quality that you're trying to achieve, uh, you could reduce the values here also. The next item you're interested in is common FPS values, which is your frame per second. A really high quality stream will have 60, but I would recommend starting at 20 or 30 and working from there to see if your computer can handle it. Next on the list would be hotkeys. These are a series of commands you could add to add convenience to your streaming or recording. The ones I personally recommend and use would be the stop and start streaming and recording functions. Also the push to talk feature. The push to record especially I use this way you don't have to alt tab all the time and you could you know, incrementally film things that are important to pick up and leave out a lot of cutscenes and save yourself editing and stuff in the future. Push to talk is another valuable tool. This allows you to reduce, you know, background noise that could be being picked up. 
Also, it allows you to be in another chat or use your microphone outside of, you know, the use of just uh, recording the video or streaming. And that brings us to our last tab, which is Advanced tab. And there's nothing you really need to change in there that's going to dramatically affect the output more than the stuff we already input. I really hope you found this video helpful. I tried to lay down the baseline for 1080p. You know, I also showed my exact settings and, you know, try to give as many suggestions to either improve your quality beyond what I'm using or reduce it to 720, you know, or make it compatible to what you have. Now, in the comment section below, feel free to let me know if this helped you or if you still have questions, I'll try my best to answer them. And please, if this video helped you or you found it useful in any way, hit that like button. Also, uh, feel free to subscribe for more videos like this and video game reviews and uh, daily streams pretty much. This has been Entertain45 and we'll see you in the future.